Hello, dear farmers. We have a really good one for you today. Predators in the pens. Let's go catch something. Just a quick disclaimer, I will show predators, I will show animals caught in traps in this video. Be sure to check your state game laws, your local game laws as far as trapping is concerned. I'm in Texas, I'm here at my farm at San Jack Whitetails here in East Texas. So be sure you know exactly what you can and can't do as far as trapping in your area. I'm gonna go ahead and give you the answer to the test here before we get started. The fewer predators that you have on your farm, the healthier your deer herd will be. That's guaranteed. Lower the predator numbers, the healthier your deer herd will be. Let's get started. With a predator, you have to remember what is the definition of a predator. And the definition of a predator is really simple. They are a thief. Once you realize that, once you get, get that across in, in your mindset as far as trapping, once you realize you're trying to catch a thief, it makes trapping so much easier. And on your farm, you should have a list of the predator, predators that you're going to fight. You don't have to have a written list. At least have a list up here of, of what you're going after. And I'm going to share with you the list that, that I have here on my farm, the predators that I have to fight against. And starting out with number one, I guarantee you my number one, is probably your number one. And the number one predator that we probably all have to face on our farms is a dog. We don't have to have to face the problem with our own dogs. It's always somebody else's dog, an, an, a stray dog or unwanted dog that comes on the property. The number one thing I can tell you about that, if you work for somebody and your job is to take care of the deer, know what the owner's policy and procedure, know what they want you to do when that happens because we all know dogs are very prejudiced. So what I mean by that is a dog will come after your number one deer. They will come after your best breeder book. A dog will go after your best pedigree doe in the pen. How they know it's the best one, I have no idea, but that's what they're after. That's how it works with dogs and dogs, it happens so fast, you do not have time to procrastinate. You have to, you have, to have everything in place to get the animal off your property immediately. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. You really have to know what your local laws are and your state laws about taking care of predators and dogs are number one. Number two on my list is bugs. We all have to face bugs. Some people fight bugs with misting systems. Some people fight bugs with running fogging machines. If one farm has really good success with a fogger, the next farm does. And if one farm has really good luck with running misting systems, the next farm does. And that's another video uh, explaining what the differences are. But an option with fighting bugs that you may have not thought about is a heavy duty commercial grade bug zapper. These work really well. Uh, recently at a Texas Deer Association uh, convention, there was a company there selling these commercial grades and I bought several of them. If you go that route, don't put these commercial grade bug killers in your pens because they're a predator. You're trying to draw the bugs away from your deer. So you would set these up on the perimeter, set them up uh, uh, on, on the ends of your pens. You, you don't want to draw the bugs to the deer, draw them out. And these are really intense. Uh, I was, I've been extremely satisfied uh, with the success I had of killing bugs with these huge commercial grade bug killers. And they're inexpensive. Uh, there's, there's basically little, if any, maintenance. Uh, you, you may want to check those out. Number three on my list is raccoons and possums. I'm going to put those two together. And this is when we kind of get serious. This is when we get kind of the meat and potatoes of traps and, and, and what really goes on. With, with, with raccoons and possums, the, the first way to catch those is what I refer to as a live trap. Uh, the industry calls them cage traps. There's basically two different kind of cage traps on the market. One that I refer to as retail. What I mean by a retail cage trap is that you can walk into an Atwoods or a tractor supply and get these traps. These traps work really well, but the problem that you're gonna have with them is that the, the sheer size of the raccoons that you have on your property, they're so big, they, they, will, they will pound these traps down because they will break, break the pans, they will break the mechanisms because they're just so big. They work, but they're not going to hold up to the sheer volume of the raccoons that, that you're probably having to catch. So the next option with that is, is getting a commercial uh, cage trap 
you're going to pay about double on the price, but these commercial grade traps work really, really well. They're strong. You can't destroy them if you take care of them. They will last you, you know, just forever, basically. They're built to take a pounding versus of these retail traps. And, and they work, work really well. They're, they're easy to set, they're, they're easy to bait. Uh, anybody can, can start out with a cage trap. Another trap on the market that, that's probably the best selling trap to catch a raccoon is what is called a dog proof trap. What a dog proof trap means is this, this trap, a, a dog's foot, a dog's paw cannot go in this diameter. These are built and made just to catch a raccoon, just what they're for. The only thing negative about these, they're a little bit hard to set if you have smaller hands or, 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 or if you're a lady that just doesn't have the, the wrist strength to pull back this spring. But that's really not a problem because they have simple tools that you can buy to help set these, or you can use a, a big screwdriver to help set these. But once you set one one time, you say, oh, you, you've got it figured out. There's there really nothing to it. They're easy to bait. They're easy, easy to set, easy to maintain. They're really inexpensive. And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a great tool to, to catch these possums and raccoons. The next trap in line of catching possums and raccoons is a steel trap. This is a Bridger number two. This is the brand. There are several different brands on the market, no different than a Toyota or a GMC or Ford or Chevy or Dodge. It, it, it's kind of the same thing. You don't want to buy multiple different brands, in my opinion. It's just stick, stick with one brand and, and, and learn the quirks and perks about it. The number two size of a trap is, is big enough to catch any predator that's going to be around your pens. These take a few more accessories and a little bit more learning curve to learn how to set them and learn how to use them. There's plenty of information, uh, so many videos and manufacturers videos that, that show you how to do this. There's really nothing to it once you get it figured out. It's harder to learn, but you'll catch more animals when you, when you go with a steel trap. The next predator that I have to fight so much is gophers. I'm in really sandy soil. A lot of you probably have never even had a gopher come into your pens, but the problem with gophers is they have gopher runs. The problem with that is if a deer's running and playing, a deer will step in that run. That's what's going to happen, and they will break their leg. How do I know? Because it's happened. How do you bait gophers? How do you kill them? This is the easiest way. This tool here costs probably $100. Gopher bait goes up here. It, you, you stick the bait in, into the ground. There's no issue with putting poison, poisonous bait under the soil in your deer pens. I've done it for years. You may have to, you may have to run this particular applicator maybe one or two times a year when, when you have gophers show up. Uh, it's, 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 it's a really, really neat product if you face that predator. The next two predators on my list are coyotes and bobcats. I'm putting those two together. These, both of these animals are, are a little bit more advanced in, uh, in, in how to catch them and how to make a flat set or a dirt hole set, how to catch these animals. And remember, they're predators, they're thieves. Uh, once you figure that out, uh, you, you, you can almost catch any animal in North America once you can figure out how to catch a coyote. But once you do it, it, it it's really fun. You're using that same number two trap to catch both of these species. Uh, bobcats are very curious. Uh, they're really simple to catch. It just takes a little bit more time of learning how to get the trap set up to catch a, bo to, to catch a bobcat. Uh, I'm in sandy soil here, so I can really see tracks. I ID tracks really well, and once I start seeing a coyote track that's hanging around the pens, it doesn't take me long to get traps out and, 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 and get one caught. But th they sure are a lot of fun trying to catch. <laughs> the next two predators on my list, I'm gonna put them in the same category, and that's squirrels and rabbits. I'm in timber country here where my pens are, so I have a lot of squirrels. I have, I have to deal with those annually. How, how do I know if I have too many squirrels? If I drive by one of my feed troughs and there's four or five squirrels sitting in it, I know I've got a problem. Well, how do you catch them? Well, there's a squirrel trap on the market. When I first saw this trap, I thought it was a joke. I said, there's no way a squirrel is going into this trap. Well, was I ever wrong? Squirrels go in this really easy and it's really easy to set. It's like a perch trap. Once they go in, they're not, they're not coming, coming back out. It's a real simple product to use if you have too many squirrels. Probably all farms have to deal with abundance of rabbits. Uh, I, I don't like having that many of them because I, every time I see a predator, I think they carry a disease. Uh, uh, they're easy to catch in, in, in live traps or cage traps to, to just r reduce your numbers because the more rabbits you have, I mean, the more bobcats or coyotes, that's, that's going to come up as well. 
Another predator that I have to deal with here on sandy soil that you probably have never even heard of is a harvester ant or a town ant or a leaf cutter ant. If you have those in your pens, you know the problem that they can cause. Now, there's a pesticide that's available. If you have that and you want to know exactly what to do, that's, that's a phone call. That's too much information to do on this video, but there, ir, there is something available uh, to take care of those leaf cutter ants if, 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 they're, if they're on your property. Well, these predators, just remember they're thieves. These predators are coming in to, to, to take that protein, to, to mess up those water troughs, to, to get in that alfalfa. And if you don't know what you have, a real simple way to do it is put out a trail camera and, 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 and figure out what, what's on the property. Here's an example of, of me using a trail camera. This is a dog-proof trap, and this is in an alleyway. And you can see the skunk how it approaches the bait because it's a predator. It wants to steal the bait. You're seldom, if ever, going to catch a skunk in a dog-proof trap. That's not what it's designed for. But since I saw that there was a skunk there, I went out and set the appropriate trap to catch the skunk because I don't want a skunk w walking through the pens. I just don't. And also, while the trail camera was out, I got footage of a bobcat walking down the alleyway. I don't want a bobcat walking down my alleyway, but when I saw that, I, I made the appropriate setup to catch the bobcat because bobcats are really simple to catch. But you, you don't really don't know what you have until you put a camera out there to see. You would probably be shocked if you put cameras out on the, in your alleys or in the corner of your pens, out around the edges of your perimeter to see where predators are, are, are coming and going in your pens. We all have breeding programs. We all have some type of a feeding program. A lot of us have a vaccination program for our deer herd. But what's your trapping program? My trapping program I have here is really, really simple. It's not rocket science. At least two times a year, I'm gonna trap really heavy. I'm gonna trap during the stress periods that I, I have here. Our stress period here is after the acorns are gone, which is usually January or February, I'll trap, trap heavy. I will use every trap that I have Every, everything's set, set up to ready to go. I'm not having to order something. I have everything available and I'll use every trap for only four or five or six days in a row because I'm by myself. I don't have any employees and, and I'll schedule that time to really try to reduce predators and I don't care what species. And, an, and another time of the year is late summer, early fall here in East Texas before the acorns start dropping again. That's a really good, good time. To, to catch predators on their feet at nighttime during their stress period when, when they're looking for food. Other, th other than that, because I am in sandy soil, if I see a raccoon track or a possum track, or if I see the feed, or I can tell that there's been a predator in the feed at nighttime, uh, I will put a camera out or I'll just immediately put out a cage trap or, or dog proof. And I do that, I do that as needed. But, but once you do that, you can, you'll really see how quick you can, you can reduce those predators. Where do I get my supplies from? Well, there are several wholesale trapping supply companies on the market. I would su suggest or recommend that you contact F&T Trading Post and tell them what you're doing. I order my stuff there and they're very knowledgeable over the phone. I wouldn't order online. I would call them and tell them exactly what you're doing. You may want to start out with three or four cage traps. You may want to start out with a half a dozen or a dozen dog proofs to, to get you started if you've never trapped before and, and work in work into to using the steel traps. And tell them you're trapping in the pens. Tell them you're trapping in alleyways. Uh, tell them you're new, you're a rookie, you're starting out, because they will know what extra tools or accessories that, that you'll need to, 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 to get this going. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you ever see me at a deer sale and you want to talk trapping, I can talk trapping for hours. I really en enjoy this aspect of the, of, of the outdoors. I don't like a predator in my pen for obvious reasons. And remember, the answer to the test is, the fewer number of predators that you have on your property, I guarantee you, you will have healthier deer. God bless you. Y'all go catch something.